With God, there is always more. More love, more life, more freedom. Welcome to Zoe's Exploring More with Michael Thompson. C.S. Lewis once wrote, Our Heavenly Father has provided many delightful ends for us along our journey, but He takes great care to see that we do not mistake any of them for home. Join me and the team as we explore the kingdom together, discovering the deep truths and offering encouragement for the journey. There is always more. Welcome to the Exploring More podcast. I'm Michael Thompson. I'm with my friends, Scott, Tom, and SJ, and we are in part three of a five-parter. Is anything else we've done five parts? That's a lot. No, I, I freedom, think five's the, the biggest. No, freedom, freedom was, was four. four. We usually masculine do four. journey had masculine probably journey. Six or seven, yeah, eight. had eight, nine, yeah, maybe even ten. We were in the studio for three days on that one. <laughs> yeah, that was it good. Was really good though. Yeah. Do you guys have a union for this? Yes, we should. Yeah, you're not qualified yet. Yeah. How do I vet? How do I get vetted? after this one? We'll, you got to go we'll through. Give you, we'll give you, you got to go through okay. the XFL, right. AAA <laughs> series. Okay. You know. Just yeah, you know, got you another got season. A certain amount of air time, and you're just about there. So this, right. this should take we'll you take over. We'll take you on, as Andreessen would say, we we'll take you on your check ride. See if you there you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was funny. That was funny. So we're exploring the ingredients of love, and we are in part three in this session, which we're going to talk about worth and how worth is significant to love when we esteem or place value and worth, what that does to a heart what that does to something and how it affects it. I think that's a great part of this conversation, how love affects us, how it impacts us when we're loved and how the lack of it affects us. We've talked about we're made for it. Father, Son, and Spirit, the Trinity made us for intimacy, oneness, connectedness with them, to be loved by them and to experience love with one another. Scott, you've hit this drum a couple times that it's in receiving, it's in being loved, it's in enjoying our position as the beloved in which we then can love others. And as God fills our tanks, and as we experience that filling over and over again, and can have the eyes to see and ears to hear the rightful association of anywhere, anytime you're being loved by someone, God's there because God's love. It's his idea, it's his invention, it's who he is, and it's what he's about. And so this is a big, big, big topic. My introduction to the Father's love in a powerful way was when I became a parent. And I've told my adult kids, you know, I can tell you I love you, and you can think you know what I mean by I love you, and you can think you know what love is. But when you have a child and you feel the responsibility and the love, and everything we're talking about, everything that's in that bucket of soup that is love, for me, the most significant awakening moment was to become a parent, and then to become a parent again, and how to love, and I certainly loved the way I was loved by my mom and dad, and that had shortcomings. There was good stuff, there was bad stuff. And so I said, oh God, I'm not going to do the bad. I will do the good. And that was my parenting plan. plan. <laughs> and then fortunately, Zoe and our trips to Colorado and this brotherhood, you know, desires to walk with God intimately mm-hmm. and feel the belovedness. And once we felt the belovedness and we begin to know how to give away belovedness, to extend belovedness, to offer belovedness, that was the trajectory changing inflection point of my life with respect to that kind of love, God's love. As a father loves his child, and we all have children. You talked about that last session. And I mean, I love your kids. Some of them are my friends, young friends, but it's not the same as my kids. And you men have loved my kids because they're mine, I think. And our association all brings that forward. But When they give you that little one to take home, I mean, when that one comes into the room, that birthing room, if you were privileged to be there, you can't describe it. You just fell in love with this little thing, you know, and it's absolutely true. It has your DNA. It bears your image. Therefore, which person on this planet does the father not love? My friend Tom's, I love him 
I love them. Do you see what I'm saying? That there's an association that invites us to love others. But I think when we start to realize that guy in the other car driving and cutting you off, He's loved by well, God. Why you got to bring and, that up? I know. You, I know, just, you know I struggle with that. <laughs> but Or the person, you know, the person in line at the grocery who is behind you, but thinks that they can, when the next lane's opened up, they can go over there first ahead of you. That's the oblivious disease. Yeah. Uh, you've diag- diagnostically. Yeah. The oblivious disease. I, I chalk it up the oblivious disease and try to have grace. There you go. Yeah. There's a lot of opportunities to love is what I'm saying. There are. <laughs> there are, yeah. You know, the drive through the, uh, I mean, we're bumping into the image bearers of God mm-hmm. all over the place. Yeah. This is to be done relationally and to esteem or to recognize, and this is what we're talking about today, is worth. We hit acceptance and validation as ingredients. Listeners, if you're jumping in on this one, we had so much fun talking about the importance of those things that I'm just going to leave those alone yeah. and jump right into yeah, worth. Yeah, go back and listen to the first two parts of the series. Yeah. And- but this is a consistent theme through the series is there's ingredients of love. You talked about it in session one, SJ, that if you flip the box around and the package is love, but you look at with the ingredients, the essence, the qualities that are in this thing that we call love, that's what we're talking about. Validation, acceptance, worth, belonging, and significance. And today we're going to devote our time to worth. So why is this on the box? Why is this one of the ingredients? What say you? How does this ingredient land for you? It seems like it's the bedrock of your identity. If we feel worthless, that's going to have a huge impact on our behavior, on how we treat ourselves, how we think about ourselves, how we take care of ourselves a lot of times. So I really do believe God wants us to know this. In the first chapter of Ephesians, Paul's writing, and he really is trying to make this point very, very clear. It's in verse 4, he says, in his love, he chose us, actually picked us out for himself as his own in Christ before the foundation of the world. So he picked us out. He chose us. He formed us. He conceived of us. He thought of us from the beginning of the foundations of the world to be set apart for him and blameless in his sight, even above reproach before him in love, because he foreordained and destined us and planned in love for us to be his adopted or revealed as his own children through Jesus Christ in accordance with the purpose of his will because it pleased him Mm -hmm. and was his kind intent. Yeah, he didn't have I mean, that's some pretty good words over us and about us and about our identity. Ephesians 1? Yeah, 1, 4, 1, 3 through 5. Yeah, I love it. And I love that scripture. When you want to talk about the truth of who are we really, that really says something quite different than most of us have come to believe about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we're learning, I think, as we journey with God and as we do develop intimacy and connection and spend time looking for his words and how he sees us, I want to remember that because the world isn't telling us that typically. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not going to celebrate us. For who we really are. Yeah. Yeah. They might celebrate us for... But you get in a... a car we drive or... A fellowship or a brotherhood or a community of people who do celebrate the true self, the good heart, the goodness that God is asking us to embrace. You know, Thomas Keating said that once. One of the first things God will do for us when we come into the kingdom is ask us to consent to our basic goodness, to our worth, to our value. Wow. Because most of us will say, no, no, not me. You know, it's right. like, I don't have anything. Yeah. Yeah. I, you're many talking of, about somebody else. I'm not Maybe worth he was thinking anything. of somebody else when he wrote that. Many of us have followed that belief to its end. Mm-hmm. You know, that feeling of worthlessness. Right. Well, I think everyone follows that feeling, that belief to right. the point where you're no longer willing to believe that that's true. So either you're going to buy all in and say, I'm totally worthless and this is the end, or there has to be something else out there. There has to be something more than my own understanding and my own belief about my worth and my value. And so then you submit to, you know, God, show me who I truly am. Or you know my story and some of the listeners may know a little I never felt worthless. I never allowed myself to feel worthless. And I would show you and I would prove it to you. And I would not allow worthlessness to be in my image construct of self. 
But so that shows of, you how much denial you were in. Cause, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I don't, no, I'm not. Because we all feel that. Yes. We're trying to prove that to it's prove not true. That, it's not that was true. an agreement yeah. that you made after you were made to feel that way. Yeah. Worthless. They all have their counterparts, validation, acceptance. They have their counterparts in which the enemy wields very, very powerful, sinister assaults against this thing that we long for, to be loved. And I think about to be insulted, it comes right at your worth. You're not worth anything. You're not worth my time. You're not worth my presence. You're not worth my attention. I mean, these are other ways that the enemy can deliver very powerful messages to the image bearers of God and can literally leave a mark on a young heart, on a boy, on a girl. And they either go one of two ways like Scott did. Well, I'll show you my worth or might be worse, they believe it, and they just live Shrink. in the shadows. Because the jury's already sentenced them to... Less than. Less than. You're not worth... And so this is a powerful, powerful idea of what the Father's love can do. Yeah. It will. It does. It brings value and worth. And we talk about this. It's one of my favorite little illustrations. eBay. Mm -hmm. What has eBay taught us? The value of anything is mm -hmm. what somebody's willing to pay. And when the Father sends the Son to bring us home through the cross and thank God for the resurrection, for the life, it's payment. When you hear the word ransom, you know what that means. Right. That something was captive and it was paid for and brought out from that captivity into freedom. To be paid for is to bring value to it. And when you look at the value that we had our worth to the Father was for him to take the substitution. I got this. I don't want them to pay. They can't pay. I'll pay. And to receive that, to experience, that's just part of it. Right. I think there's all kinds of other elements. I don't want our listeners and I don't want us to just say that that's the worth. That's the worth category. That's the file right there. It's a huge file. But there's other ways in which I think the Father wants to love us and show us our worth. I had a friend just the other day I was on the phone with, and it's a missional thing that he's on, like we all are on. And he said, you know, I don't want to do it with my giftedness. And I went, time out. What do you mean? He said, you know, I just don't want to do it out of my own giftedness. I said, well, where do you think you got the gifts? Who do you think deemed you worthy of such gifts? And we've been fans of the Enneagram for a while. Mm -hmm. You know, these nine types, there's nine expressions. Mm -hmm. It's just a way to look at this. There's nine expressions of image bearing and what it looks like to walk well right. in the image that you bear and your giftedness. No, you're worth something. You bring worth to things, mm -hmm. especially when you're on your way as far as your heart being healed from those messages that you're not worth anything, when you start to receive your worth and value, it doesn't make me puff up, Tom. As a matter of fact, it releases me to offer and to share and to learn how to do that. Not every situation needs my skills, talents, and abilities, but to learn even how to wield that yeah. or how to withhold that when, at the proper time or when to offer that at the proper time. Your worth mm -hmm. is so much more than just this intrinsic value. That's significant in and of itself that God has deemed you, put value on you, paid for you. But there's also a worth that you bring into your giftedness, your significance. Those things come into the story. Yeah. You're talking about your true self. Yeah. When you've done the work and gone on the journey, and we all are continuing on that journey, that's one of the things listeners you'll hear us say all the time is that we're still customers. You know, even though that we're guides and have different roles at the weekends where the men and the women come to hear the message of love, life, and freedom, we're still customers too. God's still speaking to us. We're not done yet. So what Michael's describing is the true self, who you really are and who God has wired you to be. I would say when you puff up, that's not God. That's, that's, that's your false else, self. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. your false self trying to get out of the cage, rattling on the bars. Yeah, I think value is a great word that helps me to get define my it. yeah, mm -hmm. it helps me to get my head around yeah. a little bit and further define worth. We we're talking about with eBay, you know, the value of a thing, what something's worth. Mm -hmm. But we look at worth as, you know, what we can do oftentimes. Yes. Oh yes, it's huge. <laughs> and you know, I can fill this role, I can help this person, I can do this thing. 
And that's not really your intrinsic value. Now, you may be gifted in that area to be able to help or do something in that way, but what you can do is not what indicates your value to God. Mm -hmm. And when you get that right, get that straight, then you're free to actually bring your worth and value to the world. And if they frown on it or don't want it, you're not crushed because love's not on the line. Your value and worth is established by the Father, by the one who made you. As Jesus said, hey, guys, if they don't want what you have, just dust off your sandals. It's okay. It's actually me they're rejecting, not you. Right. Go on to the next city. Right. But in a couple of verses, the same issue is I'm going to give you something very valuable. I'm going to give you my spirit. I'm going to give you power and authority. You're going to go and do. And then at the end of that passage, he says, but don't get all jazzed up about that. It's awesome. But I want you to get jazzed because your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Your value and worth is there. Yes. It's that. It's a combination of everything you guys are saying. And I just jotted this down because I've experienced this and I long to experience this more. When our true self concedes to our real worth to God, and from that place of worth, we offer recognition of worth to someone else. So they recognize the worth of the bestower. And that in and of itself is worth that you mm-hmm. have worth. Yeah. I have worth. You have worth. My worth recognizes your worth. That's big on three parties. It's affirming to me. It's affirming to the recipient. And it's glorifying to the Father. Win, win, win. <laughs> so, yeah, that's right. <laughs> That's right. But there were a lot of nuances in that. And one of them was the thing that Tom said, the requirement is going to be that God will ask you to concede to your own goodness. All that other stuff that's in the way, I need you to recognize who I made you to be and who you are to me in my image. And when we can wield that and we can grow other people into that image, the Lord is pleased. Yeah, yeah. When we come back, we can take a break. We're going to share some stories about how God has esteemed us, has bestowed upon us our value, our worth to him. We'll be right back. Hey, friends and allies of Exploring More podcast. We wanted to bring some attention to some of our free downloadable resources on our Zoe website. First, there's a 14-day devotional on being fathered by God. This is the same devotional that you can get a PDF download on our website. You also can find on the YouVersion Bible app. Also, the 14-day devotional on the heart of a warrior, another great resource to walk through with men or in your own time alone with God. The last free download that we want to draw attention to is the biblical theology of the heart. Is the redeemed heart good? Is this piece of equipment that is so vital to living in the kingdom, is it good or is it not? Download the biblical theology of the heart to find out more. You can find these three resources and many other free downloads and free audio files on our website at www.zoeh.org. Welcome back to the Exploring More podcast, where we are diving deep into the ingredient of love known as worth, worth and value. So how has he done that for you? How has the Father brought value and worth to your heart, to your soul? How has he delivered those packages of your worth to him and how that has impacted you? I'll go first. I think I've shared the story before, but three years ago now, I was pretty new to the full-time Zoe team. Michael, you had arranged for an opportunity for some of us to get away and have some time together and Really, for us guys that were joining the full-time team anew back then to share our story with guys that had been around a little while, like you, Tom, and a few of the other guys. So I'm sharing my story, and this opportunity comes up. And the long and the short of it was I had made an agreement from the time I was probably about seven years old that my worth and my value was attached to what I could do for people. And in that moment, in the redemptive community moment around these guys, as I was sharing my story, they saw that even when I didn't really see how deep it was in my heart and how deeply I had accepted that my value was directly tied to what I could do for people. I became a firefighter rescue 
medic for crying out loud. So, <laughs> I mean, and it was, I, I'm are. looking back now. Yeah, man. Thank you for that. But I'm looking back on that saying, I think that's part of the reason that I wanted to do that was to just arrange for that value and that worth by doing things for people. So it's been that journey of the last few years, and God is still revealing to me ways that that might still kind of linger around. It's that situation where if something like that comes up or gets stirred up in me, is that still in me? Well, no, that desire to get your value for doing things for people, that's not still in you, but it wants to get back in. So that was a freeing moment for me, for sure. Yeah, that's a great story. I remember that story, and I remember when you were sharing that, and I don't know if it was Tom, you or me, somebody said, are you surprised yeah. <laughs> that yeah. we knew that you had a tendency, we could see it. None of us had ever told you that, and none of us had probably even talked about it. But when you said it, it was like we had permission to go, yeah, we see that yeah. part of the infection. We see that. It's great to be helpful to people. Thank goodness for sure. the firefighters, for the people that run toward danger. But when their validation and worth is on the line in what they do, that's what we're saying is sinister. Mm -hmm. Rather than getting your worth from the Father and bringing that to the fires, that's different. Right. And it lands different, it's experienced differently. And you think about that. I know that when I practice that as well, SJ, it's so conditional. So Tom, I might get you a gift card and I give it to you. It's not an unconditional gift. I actually need you to thank me I need you to somehow return the love, right? That's not take, good. Take you with him to Buffalo uh, Wild Wings. That's just a yeah. silly example. <laughs> but oh my gosh, you know, when you elevate that, that my worth is attached to this gift here, now would you please give me something back to in some way bring value to what I did? That's something that I think all of us have to graduate from, get free from and is really, really a critical piece. How about you guys? Any stories? I just want to share this last little piece before we move on. Being free from that, and thank you so much, because really, Tom, you asked great questions in that time. Michael, you too. All the guys around the circle did. Being free from that, I really have been on this journey of it's a little unsettling because at first you're not really sure who you are. When you break free from that and take that old shirt off, there's this moment of, okay, I'm missing the comfort of that old shirt. You know, I'm missing that security that it brought me. So it's been a really great few years of really figuring out who I am and where my worth comes from. And I couldn't have done it without being free from that. So thanks. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're welcome. Yeah, that's awesome. Good deal. I get to share from my own story, first of all, an observation of what the fruit of the environment that we live in together and what we've been up to with God for the last 10, 12 years, I've seen countless people come along who didn't feel their worth. Mm -hmm. And as we walked together and as we did the work that we do, we we're all in the process of working out stuff with God. I have seen so many men and women find their worth, find their place, find something that they didn't even know they had. And it's a theme I see over and over and over again. And even the materials that we produce and we offer so that other groups that aren't geographically located near can do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Finding this idea of becoming wholehearted together with other people. But for me, my background story was, you know, when I was young, I was pretty deeply wounded in terms of you say stupid things. You know, I had a few incidents when... I was embarrassed. I said something that I hadn't thought through, and it was very young and very vulnerable and very impacting to me. And so as we started doing this, and Michael wanted to do a conference, wanted to start offering some of the ideas that we were embracing and experiencing and finding life in, put me in a position of actually being a speaker at one of these events which was so horrifyingly scary to me. <laughs> right. You know, you talk about fear. You're, you're welcome. About. Oh, yeah. my goodness. <laughs> yeah. oh. And the journey I've been on with that and how God has validated me in that and has shown me my worth and that I do have something to say to encourage men, and especially in these conferences, has been very life-changing to me. And I can remember the first one I was ever going to do 
I was walking down this hill, going down to the auditorium to get mic'd up and prayed over. And I was so nervous and so worried it was going to be horrible. Because, you know, I'm comparing myself to people like Michael and who had been speakers for quite a while and some of the other guys that were on the team at the time. And I never forget, God just came over me, came out from inside of me something. But after those men prayed over me, the intercessors, and I went out on that little platform, it was like I was in this bubble of confidence and encouragement and worth and value. And I felt like another person. And I've had to overcome fear, you know, numerous times since then, but less and less. But my point is that God showed me through all of that and through Michael's encouragement and other men that I got my voice back. You have a voice. You have something to say. And that has been huge in so many areas of my life now, not just in a role like that, but whether it's one-on-one with guys that work for me or on job sites, contractors, all kinds of situations where I can let myself out now where I was just so hidden and afraid to communicate because I might say something stupid or, you know. Right. I don't want the listeners to miss those two, Tom, that the wounding message to your heart was you say stupid things. Right. And then the path out of there was arranged by a father who wants you to know that's not true and that if you'll walk with him Mm -hmm. through the speaking opportunity I'll show you your value in the kingdom that you don't say stupid things. As a matter of fact, I've entrusted you with some very important things to say. That is a good story. I just don't want anybody to miss the simplicity and the significance because I've had bouts. I've done a few heavyweight fights with this thing called shame. Anything that has shamed you, those circumstances and what you walk away from any moment that you feel shame, shame says something's wrong with you. Guilt is you did something wrong. And that's powerful too. But the enemy loves to use shame. Something's wrong with you. Any heart, man or woman, you just kind of cower into the shadows yeah. until you find this opportunity as God brings you an opportunity out of those shadows. And it's part of your story, but there's so many other places that I think the sexual challenges that men have, lust and pornography, shame just drives them into the shadows, mm-hmm. into isolation or health issues, financial yeah, issues, all of addiction issues. It, I mean, the enemy wants to stab at our worth and our value Oh yeah, in those areas. And lop off an arm, yeah. lop off of, I mean, yeah. literally, it's a hatchet job. Yeah. And what do most guys do? It just makes me think of the Monty, <laughs> Monty Python, Python thing. It's just a flesh wound. I'm fine. Your arm's off, dude. Yeah. yeah. Or even you know? worse. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I just want to affirm you, Tom, to, I mean, that must have been like walking up to the edge of a cliff. Yeah, it was pretty scary. But what bravery and courage to do that. And now you're one of the most adored and enjoyed speakers on the team. I mean, the guys love you. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I thought we were going to bring it up a while back, a John Elway story that I'm going to put Scott on the spot. But what we would offer is worth is when you give someone your time or when you give somebody in that space your attention, when you give someone your eyes, when you give them your ears to listen Those are very loving things. It gives value. It translates and transmits value. You're valuable to me. You've talked to somebody who's on their phone texting or looking at something. How do you feel? Devalued. Right. And I think when we think about certain celebrities, we were talking about Denver. We just did Heart of a Warrior West conference out West, and we were talking about who's the patron son of Colorado, of Denver. Most famous guy you know in and, Colorado, uh, yeah. And, and it was Scott Baitness. He wanted us to say this. It was, <laughs> it was John Elway. But if you know Scott's story from the podcast or you've been to the conferences, he had a short stint in the NFL. Well, the team he was with was the Broncos, and the quarterback he was behind with the clipboard and the hat on backwards chart and stuff was a guy named John Elway. So here we are 25 years later. 30 years later, 30 years later, (laughs) and um, and Scott's mom passed away recently, just last month, and this leukemia thing has been hitting you for a while. And through circumstances, interesting circumstances, through business and some other things, a friend is connected to John Elway. John Elway hears about Scott, and what did you get? (laughs) I got a 303 area code voicemail. You know, I get robocalls. I get 50 a day, right? We all do. 
303, that's Denver. What, who in Denver? Let me just check this one out. And I hear Scott Stancavage, John Elway here. How you doing, brother? And, you know, I was in the middle of losing mom, and that created a sense of worth that somebody yeah. of that high level of recognition would remember me. Mm -hmm. And I had worth to them that they would take their time to return the call. And he's just a man. You know, I've given talks about MJ, Elway, LT. You know, they're not Jesus Christ. But they did establish a worth in me that I wanted to share and, yeah, and say— It was uh, fun. It was fun. It's fun for everybody, not just for me, hey, look at me. And that brings me to the story I would share is that a very significant moment in my life was when a Christian businessman, very, very successful, took me out to lunch, and I thought we were going to talk about his office space and the options and how to negotiate the deal. And we didn't talk about any of that. He asked me during that lunch, do I have a life verse— I said, Gene, I don't even know if I have a Bible. I love, I love life first. Yeah, man. And I said, do you, trying to get out of the focus right. on me. And he, he eloquently, like Shakespeare, read Psalm 1. Mm. I said, wow. And then we changed the subject. But I was convicted. I mm. need a life first. What is a life first? And so through reading and the whole other story, how it came. But my life first is Matthew five sixteen, which is the line that says, shine your light so that others may see your good deeds and through them come to know the Father. I read over it and I read by it and it drew me back. And that is the Lord saying to me, Scott, you have worth. You have good deeds. You have bad deeds too, but you have good deeds. You're recognized. You have a platform. John Elway called you, right? Using those so that people can come to know me, those things of your worth benefit glory and praise and honor to me, Scott, that's pretty important. That's pretty important. So the false humility, well, I don't know. No, I'm not going to be false. I accept that. I appreciate that. I thank you. I received that gift. I'm glad that talk. The Barco days were great. I'm happy to share stories with all of those things. I don't want to be arrogant, but I want to say that's who God set me up to be. And part of his plan for me is those things are to be used for his glory and so that he would be known. Yeah. Yeah. So you know where I got to go as we land this is, what if the voicemail, what if the call was from the king of kings? Would you feel the value and worth that you would from a John Elway, from a Michael Jordan, from a celebrity? I want to narrow the distance between that because I think probably a lot of us would not recognize that number or that call and we want to change that so that when you are experiencing worth, the Father is bestowing on you value and worth, that it's more than God who created me, who sees me, the Father. It's not like my daughter, well, Dad, you're supposed to do that, or you're supposed to say no, that. No, it's this. It's, it's, hey, Scott Jennings, Jesus Christ here. Just checking on your brother. Uh, yeah. And, hey. oh, and by the way, uh, they're making <laughs> French toast at the dining hall this With morning. With bacon. Yeah, with bacon. With bacon, yeah. <laughs> and Michael and I argue over who that was really for. I think it was me, but... It's the invitation, friends, to consider maybe a, a new paradigm, a new, mm -hmm. a new way of looking mm -hmm. at, is there a bishop in your life that's trying to unveil you, that God is saying, I see you, I see you, and I want you. You're that valuable to me. Or are you the bishop that God's saying, go show and tell that heart that I see them, that we want them. I mean, this is the way the kingdom works, and that's why worth is a significant, huge part of loving and being loved. And so we want all the listeners to know, and the friends that you have, you may be the UPS guy today, you may be the FedEx guy, you may be the one who leaves a voicemail that God has put on your heart to call somebody and communicate to them their value and their worth, and then at the same time, Hey, yeah, you got to sort through the other messages, robo calls, and I don't always answer my phone. I don't, because if you're not trusted, I'm just going to let them leave a voicemail, and then I'll find out who they are. And to trust the presence of God, the voice of God, and the invitation of God to be loved, to be the beloved sons and be the beloved daughters, that's what this conversation's about. And we're going to keep having it. We've got a couple more to tackle of these ingredients, but friends... Yeah, we want to help. As you said, Tom, we tried to create resources, Heart of a Warrior, some other resources that have come along to invite and communicate that. But 
the most important thing is for you to experience that. And that's what we're hopeful that these conversations on Exploring More podcasts can be not exceptions, not, yeah, it's true for those guys, but an invitation to be normal and to be your normal, that the God of the universe sees you, he loves what he sees, and he wants to be a part of your life and is inviting you, wooing you through so many circumstances into love that first he could love you. I'm going to say this, this doesn't need a censor. Seriously, he's going to love the crap out of you. He yeah, wants man. to get all yeah. that stuff that's in the way off. Yeah. He wants to love the crap out of you so that literally that nothing would be in the way. You would be free. And then he's going to deploy you into the mission, into the kingdom mission of loving others. And that's good news. That's good news. Amen. Yeah. Exploring more podcast listeners. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey. This is part three. We've got two more to go. We've got belonging and significance yet to come. So I hope you've enjoyed it. We hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks again, Scott and Tom for mm -hmm. for joining awesome. Michael and I. And listeners, if you got questions or comments you want to send to us, exploring more at zoe.org is our email address. And if you would be so kind as to leave us a rate or a review on your favorite podcast platform, we sure would appreciate that. We've got tons of free resources on our website. If you go to zoe.org forward slash store, you'll see the free link there. We've got plenty of stuff for you to check out. And if you haven't checked out earlier episodes of the Exploring More podcast, so we've got lots and lots and lots of stuff for you to listen to that talks about your heart, talks about your identity. The kingdom. The kingdom, mm -hmm. absolutely. So check all that out. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next week. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of Exploring More. The landing page for this podcast is zoe.org forward slash podcast. That's Z-O-W-E-H dot org forward slash podcast, where you can find the show notes and various platforms to which we broadcast. You can also find us and the life of more by visiting Zoe on Uversion Bible app, Right Now Media, our Facebook page, and Zoe on Instagram and Twitter. Remember, with God there is always more, and you were made for more. Mm -hmm.